Hey everybody, Doug Reynolds here, your Sacramento area realtor. And right now in our market, this is kind of the spring 2012, our market is pretty hot right now. We've been talking about this for a long time. We have very, very little inventory. It's around two months worth of inventory, which is really low on a historical factor. I've been talking about how it's a price sensitive seller's market. We've got, when homes hit the market and their price right, we've got multiple offers, sometimes over list price. There's a lot of competition with buyers right now. There's more demand than there is supply in our area, especially in the you know 250,000 and below price range. So here's a lot of couple quick tips on to maybe why your offer is not getting accepted when you're in that competition in our area, in the Sacramento area right now. Uh, first off, it's it seems simple thing, but price. Uh, there's a lot of buyers that are seeing what's been going on in the market with the way interest rates are so historically low and the way prices seem to have kind of flattened here and bottomed out. Um, people are feeling that we're at the bottom of the market and buyers are really getting competitive with their offer. They're feeling like if something's priced right, they're willing to pay for it. They're not trying to you know, get a real discounted price or anything because they know that they're not going to get the home. So price, ultimately you've got to submit a strong offer with your price, uh, with a price that's correct with what the comps are showing. Your agent should be providing you that information, you should be trusting what they're saying in, in price. Uh, next thing is types of financing. If you've got a cash offer, that's obviously going to be the strongest if you're comparing you know, even prices across the board. After cash, it's conventional, which is considered the strongest of all the financing types. So if you have conventional financing, that's stronger than the next one is FHA financing. It is not considered as strong of a buyer when you have FHA financing. And then finally, VA is, as an industry, kind of is looked as the, the least desirable type of offer with the financing with the VA. Just some more strict guidelines with FHA and VA. They have real strict guidelines with the property. The property has to be in pretty darn good condition, not have certain issues. VA, even more within that, typically they need a complete pest report, whether it's in the contract or not. And so your cash, conventional, um, FHA and VA, what type of financing do you have? That might be having a problem. If you've got a VA offer out and they've got cash offer or conventional offers at the same price, they're going to go with the conventional one. So, Next is, are you asking for a credit from the seller? Well, a lot of buyers out there, they're FHA buyers, they have just barely enough money for the down payment and so they need help with the closing costs which is fine, but you've got to realize that that is hurting your offer. If you're submitting an offer of $150,000 and you're asking for a $5,000 credit from the seller, well, you know, it's really like you're offering $145,000. So it's hurting your offer um, if you are asking for a credit. Understandably, there are people out there that definitely do need the credit. So just know that you need to structure your, your offer in the best way possible if you have to have that credit in there. One option you might want to consider is talking with your lender about potentially getting a lender credit. Right now, interest rates are so, so low. You actually can take a little bit higher of an interest rate and get money back from your lender to help with your closing costs. So talk with your lender about that. Um, another one is the terms. What are the terms you're putting in the contract? Are you putting a 45-day escrow? If you are, that's not a strong offer. It needs to be 30 days or less right now if you've got competing buyers going for the property. So if you've got a lender that is doing FHA and they say it needs to be 45 days long, you need to find a new lender. There's plenty of good lenders out there that can do FHA in 30 days. Okay, so length of escrow is going to be important. And then also on page two of the contract, what are the terms? Are you asking for the seller to pay for everything under the roof? I mean, are they paying for escrow, title, transfer taxes? Are they buying you a home warranty? On top of that, are you asking them to pay for a roof cert and clear the pest report? And then you also want them to throw in the refrigerator and the washer and the dryer. Um, you know, things like that are fine in the right context, but if you're up against a lot of other buyers, you need to think about how to structure the terms appropriately so that your offer is going to be looked at in the best light. Um, one, one other thing is your lender. The lender that you're using with your pre-approval letter, it may or may not be 
uh, a reason why you're getting your offer accepted. If you're working with a broker right now, people look at brokers as not a very good option for lending. Brokers are slow, they take a long time, there's a lot of issues when you're working with a broker. You need to be working with a direct lender and one that has a reputation of being fast. Bank of America does not have a reputation of being fast. I'm not saying don't work with Bank of America, but um, the industry kind of looks at them as their, their loans take a long time. I've done deals with Bank of America. Some were quick, some weren't. Um, so make sure your lender that you're working with can, can work quickly and you have a strong pre-approval letter, letter stating all the facts so that you've got you know underwriting, DU underwriting approval, your credit score is good, all those things. So your lender could be having an effect as well. And finally, um, if you're writing an offer on a short sale, you may have some issues with getting your offer accepted if you're up against other people because of a few factors. One, what is your commitment? In that short sale addendum, when you're saying how long you're going to wait to hear an answer from the, the seller's lender, what are you putting in there? Are you just leaving the standard 45 days that are in there? Or are you actually changing those terms? Right now, my buyers, if they want to write an offer on a short sale property, I'm telling them they need to commit to a minimum of 90 days. That shows the seller that you're in it, you're gonna wait for at least three months to hear an answer. Right now, most short sales can get worked out in that period of time, so you need to have commitment in the short sale addendum. I would suggest minimum of 90 days or more, as well as what are you doing about your deposit check? Right now, many buyers are actually agreeing to put their deposit check into escrow while they're waiting to see if we're going to get the, the short sale approved. Um, it shows extra commitment on the buyer's standpoint. The seller feels more comfortable accepting that offer. Um, if the short sale doesn't get approved, obviously there's no sale to be done. You're going to get your check back. Once it does get approved, it hopefully will get approved. That then you know goes towards your purchase and everything like that. So. Uh, on short sales, you need to show commitment. So those are some of my top reasons why you might not be getting your offer accepted in this tough, kind of tough uh, market at the beginning and, and middle of 2012 here in the Sacramento area. Hope you enjoyed my video. Feel free to call or email. Contact information is at buywithdoug.com. And check out my business Facebook page. Subscribe to my YouTube and follow me on my blogger. And uh, look forward to hearing from you guys. Clear skies.